high beach, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, transcribed with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. A twilight of August folds itself into ebb of daytime, and Broadway reacts. Langer walks the street. The after-work walk, the beginning dream walk, rhythm to the pulse of waking neon, and to drifting carousel whispers as street carnival begins. Promises and textures spun by alto sax in the upstairs dance pavilion. Call for dancers. The hawkers setting their wares adrift on August winds. Call for buyers. And line up for the pitchman. And be shoved and pushed and mauled. And no bitterness. For the taste of this twilight melts in your mouth. And you will wait the night if you have to. Where I was, vast room draped in darkening silk against the fall twilight, and seated cross-legged on high polish of floor, cluster of men and women in evening dress, coupled spectators of a performance on small velvet carpeted stage, performance of puppets, life-size, Chinese, Mandarin princess, Manchu warrior, acting, reacting, accomplishing the nuances of a flute, and also reaction of the spectators... And on their sigh, a woman turns her head, observes intently every individual response, laughs softly, silently, then sees you, rises dance-like, holds the slit of the metallic-embroidered Chinese robe as she glides towards you. I believe, I do believe my guests are enjoying themselves. Mrs. Tyler? Yes, Joyce Tyler, and I'm so deeply glad my butler ushered you in here so you could see for yourself. Aren't you deeply glad? You phoned headquarters. You said you had to... Wait. Look at them. Look at those eastern pockets. Look. My. Oh, my. Mrs. Tyler. This cocktail party of mine will never be forgotten as long as my guests shall live. Get with it, Mrs. Tyler. On the phone, you said... I know exactly what I said. I said, come to me because a violence will have been committed. Exactly how I said it. What are you talking about? Mrs. Tyler... Violence. You must know. Death accomplished by violence. Look, at... What time is it? About 6.30. 6.30. Then he will have done it. He will have killed. Who? Philip. Philip, my husband. Philip, dear. You're not drunk, Mrs. Tyler. You're not... Quite far from it. All my senses are very alive. Philip promised... Well, he practically promised. Promised what? That he would murder her. Murder Anne. Murder Anne Martin. Butler will give you Anne's address, where her death should be. A very unattractive death. That is, if you're interested. Deeply interested. And the music stopped. And appreciation was sounded and voiced. The entertainment over, the guests began to mingle. You're invited, too, if you care to stay a while. The girl who brought the puppets came alone. But leave the girl with the puppets to her own devices and Mrs. Tyler to whatever hers were and get out of there. Turn quickly and go. Ride Manhattan now at dusk. Small time of small magic where the eight-hour day ends and melts into a summer night. Time of going home. Begin to prowl time. And find an address. Brownstone, tenants cataloged in the vestibule. Corridor of yellow paint and brown rug turning to yellow. Yes? Inquiry of lady. She brushes back strand of hair which falls back to her cheek again when she drops her hand. What is it? A tired face and no makeup. Brown eyes and thin body she hugs to herself. What can I do for you? Miss Ann Martin? That is correct. I'm from the police. You may come in if you like. Thanks. I wasn't sure I'd find you here, Miss Martin. Of course, I have no idea why you're here. You claimed you were a policeman, and I asked you into my apartment. I ask you a courtesy, then. Don't be cryptic. Tell me what it is you want. Well, Mrs. Tyler... Philip's wife? That's right. Well? Well, she said Philip was coming here, that he had been here, that he had murdered you. I needn't have asked you to come in after all. You had only to satisfy yourself when you asked me my name. Mrs. Tyler wasn't drunk when I spoke to her. Why did she tell me what she did? That's a stupid question, isn't it? You're having talked with her and having had a chance at her motives. Why do you ask me? Was Mr. Tyler here? Yes, he was. What was he doing here? I know you're not being nasty because I'm not very attractive. And truthfully, I believe I'd be very foolish if a man as much as held my hand. Just tell me what he was doing here. He drops in now and then. He's a moody person. We're old friends and I recognize his moods. He talks, and I listen. He paces, and I watch him. He reminisces, and I help him recall. Do you know his wife, Miss Martin? No. I saw her once. 
at a wedding years ago. I remember only that she was very beautiful. Is there anything else, Mr. Clover? If you can't think of anything, would you mind very much? Clover. Yes? I don't want to intrude. I don't want to break up anything you might... Oh, it's all right. Uh, what is it? The man outside the desk, I told him my name. He said, just go right in. Just walk right in. That's what I did. I, I just walked... What can I do for you? I'm Tyler, Philip Tyler. Have a chair, Mr. Tyler. Uh, thanks very much. No, I've, I've come to apologize. For what? For not killing Ann Martin. You feel all right, Mr. Tyler? It was Joyce. Joyce said, Philip, dear, go and apologize to the man. You've caused him so much unnecessary trouble. You didn't kill. You didn't do anything. You made him a wild goose chase. Apologize. She told me you'd promised her that you'd kill Ann Martin. Why'd she tell you that? You tell me, Mr. Tyler. Makes me out such a... Such a nothing, a non-entity. Joyce telling you that, she didn't need to. Then you really meant to kill Ann Martin. I told Joyce I'd rid myself of Ann. Get her out of my way. Just get her out of my way. Joyce, and quite rationally too, assumed I meant to kill Ann. About you and Ann? Old friends. Very old friends. Long-time friends. And that's why... I think I really meant to kill Ann. I think I wanted to. I wanted to. And then I went to see her and... We sat and talked. About what? Old times, half-lost memories. We scrabbled through them for a time, put them back together. We talked a little about dying, hers, mine. I, I was trying her, you know, sort of skirting the edges of how she'd like to be dead. Trying myself, too, and... And, and what? The <laughs> fact remains, Mr. Clover, I didn't kill Ann. And I've apologized, just like Joyce told me. Oh, what a good boy am I. Mr. Tyler... I said it, didn't I? Sorry I put you to trouble, old boy. I'll be leaving. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Fine man. Fine man to talk to. You know people like that? Dr. Sinsky. He's working in the lab down the hall tonight. I'm sure you'd... Sure, sure. I'd like to ask his forgiveness, too. For being alive. The least I can do. Don't just stand there. Hurry it up, Mr. Clover. <laughs> Come on in, Dr. Sinsky. Have a seat. I had conversations with Mr. Tyler, Danny, late last night. And this morning, it's sunshine again, a new day again, and... What's unhappy today, Doctor? Observations of a doctor as concerned a sick man. Then Philip Tyler is sick. I would say so. He suffers from living in the world. Huh? From being a man of our times and realizing it. He's a man of no core, of no direction... A sensitive man who thinks too often of wasted minutes and years. But not really sick. I just... No, no, not, not really sick. Only because there is no medical term for what bothers him. Nothing in Latin which means he feels sorrow for everything and mostly himself. Could he commit murder? I would say this, Danny. That Philip Tyler might make a decision to commit murder. Might pound his fist in his hand and say, Yes, I will kill somebody. And believe it. I think then that he would lose interest in a few moments. Lose interest? Yeah, I think Mr. Tyler would ask himself, what's the use? And forget about his murder. He would rather be unhappy. Yeah. Anyhow, this is a judgment. I make people... I... Danny Clover. Adler just called in, Danny. He walks the beat which includes the boat lake in Central Park. What about it? Homicide. Man was found this morning by the caretaker at the bottom of a rowboat. Bottom of... Shot the deck, died death in the back, and dumped. Man's name, Philip Tyler. What? Philip Tyler, Danny. Okay, Gino, thanks. Doctor? What is it, Danny? Philip Tyler is dead. So he finally did it. He finally killed himself. I was about to tell you that he was liable to commit suicide. He was shot in the back. He was murdered. I see. His murderer could have waited, Danny. His murderer killed a dead man. <coughs> Suddenly you have a lot of work to do, don't you, Danny? Goodbye. Listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. 
Just sit back, relax, and watch the cars roll by. Watch the heavy traffic on the highways in the summertime. Watch the traffic jams and the roadblocks and the tired, hot drivers sitting behind the wheels of their cars trying to make time and get somewhere fast. Just help yourself to a nice, refreshing, cool drink. Sit on your chair on the porch or stoop or lawn under the shade of a big elm tree with your radio tuned to some nice, sweet music or a thrilling whodunit on CBS radio and watch the summer rush on the roadways. Gosh, you're smart. The heat of August puffs in from the river and Broadway is a place of regret. The dreams of winter fashioned for the summer are blurred now. The golden girls fan themselves with newspapers. It's the time of the salt tablet, the fly paper, and the sullen sleep on the fire escape. And mornings are filled with a thousand hours and the bleary talk and dead cigarettes in the bottom of paper cups. It's summer in New York, and if you can afford an ocean voyage, the most wonderful time of the year. And for a policeman who reads of ocean voyages and sweats at headquarters, Sergeant Gino Tataglia is the cool breeze that comes from the nowhere into the where. Where? Huh? I asked you, where do you want your lemonade? Well, just put it where I can reach it, Joe. But your desk is so cluttered with bric-a-brac and whatnot. Well, just give it to me. Thanks. I know the symptoms, Danny. You wish you were someplace else, don't you? A regular snagglefoot. Regular what? Snagglefoot. Restless. Who hears trade winds and tinkly temple bells. You're just like Mrs. Tartaglia. She knows. Get her in a hot room with a glass of lemonade in her hand... By the way, she's dreaming of uncharted horizons, flying fish, and tom toms. You and Mrs. T, what a pair. Gino, please. Snaggle feet. Do you have anything for me, Gino? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Concerning the deceased Philip Tyler. Leg work by the fleet detective Mugovan reveals that he had been married for three years. Go on. A typical Park Avenue wedding of who wears the fanciest wedding gown and who gives the fanciest parties. Anything else? A note on the background of Mr. Tyler, should you wish it. If you please. Mother and daddy died when he was ten years old, leaving him the ward of Mr. James Luddy, whose address I give you. Mr. Luddy being the former business associate of Mr. Tyler's dad. It's all, Danny. And wait till I tell Mrs. T that you are of the same stuff. Just wait. <laughs> You've disturbed. And your reason would be? Police. Do you have a thing that goes with that? A routine? A saying? Just this. Spit and polish. Spit and polish for the bright badge of authority. And your pleasure is, is, is what? You, James Luddy. Ever so. Come in, won't you? You'll find that contour chair, the low tilted one. You'll find it has a certain therapy. You deposed me of it anyway, Mr. Don't... Luddy, you I sh- want... Let's hear the recording, shall we? Let the music makers finish their song. Let's turn it off, shall we, Mr. Luddy? Ah. Spit and polish, and polish and bright authority. Let's turn it off, shall we? And it's turned off. I asked once, and now I know. Your pleasure is, of course, Philip. The death on the lake of Philip Tyler. Whatever you can tell us about him, Mr. Luddy. Whatever will... Will uh, help you. Will help you solve the murder of an unimportant man who was once a distressing child. Just tell me about him, huh? I adopted him, you know, when he was 13. A thing arranged between me and his parents in case... In case... Go on. They died. I took the boy. Ten years old. Age of innocence. <laughs> I thought innocence. I know now it was nothing. Just nothing at all. Kid Tan, his parents dead. Why, I also made allowances for that minor tragedy. And waited. Waited for Philip to go up. 
I sent him to prep school, private school, university, and college. Only... Only what, Mr. Luddy? Only the boy was ill-equipped for growth of emotion, for fruits of culture. For Philip, I must say it, Philip was a sad sack. Philip is dead. He was murdered. With this, I must say, Philip was an appealing child, with all his lack of appealing. And as a man, appealing. Well, how explain Joyce, wife of wealth, wife of beauty, a woman who can take a man who is nothing and fashion him into... But not Philip. Not even Joyce could accomplish a man in Philip. Philip, who refused to grow up, refused to face the world and its facts, the other woman, Anne Martin, what about her? Anne Martin? Philip's Anne. A drab. A drab as a child of 14 when Philip and I first met her at my summer place. She lived next door. Philip was 15 and he brought her into the house. And so dull as a child. And so dull as a woman. Then you've seen her lately. You No, once. Not long ago, Philip brought her here. I pleaded headache. I made an oath not to see her ever again. I suggest... What? Vic Stewart. Philip grew up with him. You'll find Vic at the athletic club, East River. Talk Philip with him. I suggest him. How emotional. How very emotional. Shimmy, 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 and the fat's knocked off. The fat's knocked off. Oh, the fat's knocked off. All right, get your clothes, Mr. Stewart. Huh? I said get your clothes. We're going downtown. Uh, you hate me, Mr. Clover. You hate old Vicky. Come on. All right, I'll talk with you, Mr. Clover. Nothing in the rule book says a member of this club can't talk with a policeman. Only... Only what? You're going to hate me. I'm getting in condition, meanwhile, because I want to be lean and slender for coming events. You'll tell me about it, huh? Philip Tyler's dead, right? Uh-huh. That leaves Joyce. Joyce Tyler. A girl like that hits the open market. Well, the boy's just got to lean down, slander down. <laughs> All the fat area, both sides, so he's in condition. So he's not trampled in the crowd of fat boys after Joyce. She just made widow yesterday. Give me about six weeks, I figure. Six weeks, I'll be trim, lean down, gaunt, interesting. Front and center, head of the line, right at her feet. <laughs> That, Philip. What about him? How he made team with Joyce, I'll never understand. Uh, yeah, I do. The only explanation. Tell me, too, huh, Mr. Stewart? Well, Philip brought out the maternal in people, his guardian, Joyce. <laughs> Even me. Once in prep school, he got loaded on bootleg gin and picked a fight with me. I cut him up good. Left, left, right, cross, and again. He hit the floor, cried like a baby. I picked him up, cradled him, put him in his bunk, crooned to him. Me? A mama at 15. And the other time, North Shore Summer Resort. What happened that time? There was a, a child there, a young kid named of, uh, Ann Martin. Philip took her to a dance, kid dance, teenager's dance. Philip didn't get home till dawn, and he was crying. I gave him gin. What about the... Teenage dance with a seashore, moon, beach. Boy comes home at dawn, and he's crying. <laughs> you tell me why. You tell me what happened to make a boy like Phil cry. Yep. I got pounds and pounds to go yet, Mr. Clover. Yeah. Goodbye, Clover. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy in the fat. Out into the street, and it becomes another evening. Look away from the day. Look back at it. And it's darker. A time has suddenly slipped away, and it's another time. It's going on night. And becomes dinner time. Find a restaurant and enter it with hopes flung high that this place, this one new place that you had chosen to rest for a while and to dine had somehow been touched by the miracle that here they were tender and gentle with food. Be assured by the waitress who had a special knowledge of what should be ordered, and do so. And by this special method, have the same tired trout you pushed away last night. But the cream soda is cooling, and rice pudding nourishing. Leave the tip and get out. And ride the streets for a while. Time for thinking about. Questions to ask yourself about a man who was afraid... Philip Tyler, a man who was scared by the world, a man who hated a decision, who ran from his wife to another woman. 
questions to ask concerning whys and wherefores. Ring a bell onto a place lately furnished with party and Chinese puppets. And Mrs. Tyler... Hello, Mr. Clover. Mrs. Tyler. Won't you come in? No divertisement this day, Mr. Clover. No puppets nor a clever girl who dangled them. Just an apartment now where lives a widow. I'm sorry what happened. Mr. Clover. Yeah? Would you know who killed him? No. No, not yet. We're not sure. I would like to know, desperately. For a reason outside of what you might think. What do you mean? How could my husband cause an emotion? It worries me. It bothers me. Who could have hated him enough to kill him? I ask that, and not, not tritely. You see... What? My husband was an innocuous man, a harmless man, a frightened man, an inconsequential man. Well, you married him. Because I loved him. See, the kind of man he was, I'm that kind of woman. I'm wonderful to laugh with, to think of shrill things with gimmicks for parties and never slow down and think about it. Never stand apart and stretch out your hand and feel the drift of time. Philip and I could afford not to take things seriously. Yet there was Anne Martin. Was and is. I want to know about her. What you already know or have guessed. Oh, tell me. My husband would get a mood. I'm not equal to moods, Mr. Clover. I don't understand them. I'm afraid of them. My husband with a mood was like a child covered with something sticky on his face and clothes and sweet and dirty. I, I couldn't stand him. So he ran to Anne Martin. Once. Once. What? My husband knew her when she was young. Everything that's young, Mr. Clover, and everybody that's young. An attractiveness, no matter what happens to it later. Do you agree? Of course you do. Let's say that long ago, between him and Anne Martin, momentarily, perhaps just an evening, well... You go on. Must I? You need to hear it? Bystander with a duty to hear such things? My husband told me that once, once with Anne Martin, he felt like a giant. I see. Yesterday, it was very foolish. Yesterday, Philip had a mood. He needed to be a man. I taunted him, said, kill this woman. Now there would be a thing to do, an accomplishment. He went off on his mission. It killed him. Mr. Clover. Yeah? Surely you know the answer. Of course you do. One at the end of the hall, Mugman. Yeah. Yes. Hello, Miss Martin. Mr. Clover. Will you come in, you and your friend? All right. This is Detective Muggerman. Hello, Miss Martin. How do you do? This time, Mr. Clover, is there a reason why you've come? I think so. Philip. That's right, Miss Martin. You need to know more about him, is that it? Mostly to make sure who killed him. Whatever I can tell you about him. Were you in love with him? I don't understand. Love. You and him. Were you? I guess that does it, huh? Philip was married. But he always came to you. Always? Sometimes not for months at a time. But whenever he needed understanding or sympathy. I was here when he needed me. Been going on for quite a while, hasn't it? For a long time, yes. Since I was young. Oh, I'm going to be truthful with you. That's good. Why shouldn't I be? There's no shame attached to it. What happened when he came here to you? I told you once I was here. That seemed to be sufficient. Then you liked him to come here? Yes. Oh, yes. After all, look at me. Then think of the kind of man he was. What kind of man was that? A charming man, a handsome man. Gentle, gallant. The way I heard it, he was pretty much of a bird brain. You... You... Yeah. What are you trying to say, lady? You mustn't say that. You mustn't talk like that. We've been asking about him, Miss Martin. Of his wife, the man who was his guardian, friends. Who... They couldn't have known very much. Except that he was chicken. A guy who refused to grow up. Listen. Listen. You mustn't talk like that. Why did you kill him, Miss Martin? I've got something to tell you. I have. Okay. You were right, you know. About what? I was in love with him. And why did you kill him? Will you please listen? All right. Long ago, when I was 15, in love with him since that time. That time when he took me to that dance. The lieutenant asked you why you killed him. Will you listen? That time he took me to that dance from then on. From that morning on, for him, I was a need. The lieutenant... Take it easy, Mother. And yesterday, yesterday he came to me and the things he said... Tell us. He was useless, he said, and I was. 
And I was the reason for his being useless. I was a crutch. And without me, he would be something. A man, he said. As if he wasn't already. Go on, Miss Martin. He came to my house to kill me. He explained it to me very logically. Listen, I, I told you I loved him, didn't I? I told you that. I loved him. I said to him, If you need to do that, Philip, go ahead. He took out a gun. He stared at me. He started to weep. I held him. I comforted him. I sent him away. Then why did you kill him? I reasoned with myself. By the time he came back to me to apologize, I had it all figured out. Something had happened to him. He had wanted to kill me. He honestly did. You mean your feelings were hurt, huh? No. Then what? When we walked through the park, later when we sat in the moored rowboat, he said over and over again how sorry he was. That he wished he were dead. But didn't have courage to kill himself. He wasn't man enough. Go on. He was like a little child. I couldn't look in his eyes. So I waited till he turned around. And I shot him in the back. Where are your things, Miss Martin? I'll get them. You understand, don't you? What? It's what Philip wanted anyhow. To die. I loved him, so I killed him. Anyone can understand that. There's a time on Broadway when the crowd gives up, goes home. The lights buzz fitfully, die. Then it's a street of dim moonlight and dark whispers and the wind of the summer night. The wind that scatters everything. Yesterday's headlines. Yesterday's dream. Yesterday's people. It's Broadway. The gaudiest. The most violent. The lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program was transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Charlotte Lawrence was heard as Anne. Featured in the cast were Mary Shipp, Harry Bartell, Ben Wright, and Lou Merrill. Bill Anders speaking. Remember, it's Merry and Magic, The Wizard of Oz, starring Walter O'Keefe, weekdays on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>